So I'm going to make two announcements today. But before I do, I want to share something with you. America is not a country where the party in power is able to use police force to arrest its political opponents. That is the stuff of banana republics. We don't do that in this country. I read the indictment by the Federal Department of Justice against Donald Trump. That document reeks of politicization. I will tell you why. It stays silent on the main law that's relevant to this case, the Presidential Records Act. It stays silent on the 2012 case that says that the president has an authority to decide what is and is not covered. It stays silent on the statements that Trump made in 2016 after the election, despite the fact that it quotes him before that election. It stays silent on the fact that executive orders do not bind a U.S. president as law. That tells me this is politicized. And by the way, I want to be very clear about something. As U.S. president, I would have made different judgments than Donald Trump made. You use my bullhorn. Nobody Thank you. Can, nobody How do you do you. it? You just take this here like that. Press the button right here. Nobody can hear you at all. Can you hear me? Here. Who's that? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, talk about your ties. To Good. So I'll, I'll be fine without this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be fine without it. Thank you. So the bottom line is there are two things that matter. One is how are we going to hold the Biden Department of Justice accountable? The first answer is that yesterday I submitted a Freedom of Information Act request, a demand to the Biden Department of Justice demanding what did Biden tell Jack Smith? What did Biden tell Merrick Garland? What did Merrick Garland tell Special Prosecutor Jack Smith? They are required within 20 business days to give us an answer about any direct or indirect communications. And the first announcement I want to make today is that if they do not comply with the law in the next 20 business days, then we will sue them in federal courts at our campaign's expense to get to the bottom of those answers. The news media should be doing this. Amen. It is a shame Amen. that a competitor to Donald Trump in this election has to do the job of the political news media. Your job, if you have one, is to hold the U.S. government accountable for their lies. You do not take what they say at face value for the last eight years when it was President Trump. Do not take their lies at face value now. But it is a shame that it takes a leader outside of the media to stand up. That is what we're doing. They now have this Freedom of Information Act request. And if they don't comply within 20 days and they don't follow the law, we will see to it in federal court that they do. That brings me to my second announcement that I'm going to make today. This is an announcement of a letter that my campaign has sent to every other campaign in this race to Mike Pence, to Nikki Haley, to Larry Elder, to RFK Jr., to Marianne Williamson, to Doug Bugram, Burgum, to Perry Johnson, to Chris Christie, to Ron DeSantis, the governor of the state where we are today, who by any measure is not here today in his own state. I will tell you, that we have sent this letter, and I'm happy to announce, this is my commitment on January 20th, 2025, if I'm elected the next U.S. president, pardon Donald J. Trump for these offenses in this federal case. And I have challenged, I have demanded that every other candidate in this race either sign this commitment to pardon on January 20th, 2025, or else to explain why they are not. And I will tell you something. It's going to be difficult for those other candidates to sign this letter. The reason it's going to be difficult for them is the same reason it's difficult for me. The donor class has been calling every Republican candidate and telling us to stay away from this. 
not to touch it from a 10 foot pole, not to just keep your distance away for Trump. That is what the donor class is telling us. That's what they're telling the other candidates. I refuse to abide by being a disciple of the donor class. I think that we need to declare independence from our donor class in the Republican Party. That is why I challenge every one of the other candidates to actually act on their convictions. If you're not going to president, pardon President Trump on January 20, 2025, you deserve to say why, and we will hold you accountable, just as we're holding the Biden administration accountable. That's what we need in this country. Honesty, integrity, and actual purpose for our country in a way that puts America first, not our political interests first. And I'll close with saying this before I take questions. It would be a lot easier for me as a Republican candidate in this race if Donald Trump were not in it. But I don't want to win this election, unlike others, by eliminating our competition, by a federal administrative police state arresting my opponents. I want to do it the way that our founding fathers believed we should have starting in 1776. That it is the people of this country where every person's voice and vote counts equally. That is how we decide who governs this country, not by a federal administrative police state. And I challenge the Biden administration with this FOIA request. I challenge my fellow contenders in this race with this commitment letter to say that we will pardon Trump January 20, 2025 and nobody, either Biden or the other contenders in this race, are going to be able to hide from that truth. I thank you all. We're going to open this up to some questions. Thank you. Today is not about my electoral prospects. I'll talk to you about that tomorrow. Today is about our purpose, about speaking truth, about standing on the side of citizens who should not be weaponized as subjects at the hand of a federal administrative police state. That's the focus today. So yes, I am running in this election, but I, that's for tomorrow. Today I stand on principle. I am running to win this election, but today is not about Trump and it's not about me. It is about the people of this country. This is bigger than any of us. If they can do this to Trump, they can do this to any of us. And you mark my words, actually. So the question is, I'm a Yale Law graduate, as you say, what's my vision of the law here? Let me give it to you. In 2012, I will explain to you, in 2012, the most meaningful case that has interpreted the Presidential Records Act was Judge Jackson in the Clinton sock drawer case. These are her words, not mine. Who has sole authority to determine of what counts in the act? It is the President of the United States per federal courts. That's the most relevant legal precedent. The fact that this indictment did not even mention it suggests how politicized this document really is. And I want to be clear about one more thing. I want to be clear about one more thing to answer your question. I would have made different judgments as president than Donald Trump made with those documents. But a bad judgment is not illegal behavior. There's a difference between the two. And when the federal government treats every bad behavior as an illegal act, that's a danger to every citizen. That's why I'm in this race. I will believe the evidence when I see it aired in the actual court of law. I currently do not believe anything that is in this indictment because it has selectively omitted the most relevant laws to the actual case they're bringing. So when you have a Department of Justice that has actually abandoned its own rules of fairness in bringing an indictment, that means I don't believe anything that's even in there. So I'm going to wait for the facts to come out in this court of law before I tell you what my actual judgments are on the behaviors. Right now we've been given no reason to even believe it. Other questions before we before we wrap. One last question. Why 
Why then are you saying you're going to murder him and ask other candidates to do so before the facts are aired in court? Talk about a both sides of your mouth, sir. The indictment brought by a prosecutor after a grand jury presents the most prosecution favorable version of facts. That is the most prosecution favorable version you're ever going to get. And even reading that, the omission of relevant facts and law, the relevance of executive orders not binding the U.S. president, the relevance of the 2012 Jackson holding that held who's actually accountable, the president, for deciding what records do and don't count, the selective cherry picking of Trump's quotes from a campaign in 2016 that have no place in an indictment, while failing to mention that Trump himself said that he would not prosecute Hillary Clinton after he was elected in 2016, that suggests to me that if this is the most favorable version the prosecution is able to put up, if they selectively actually leave out the most relevant facts in law in the indictment, that document is politicized. I don't believe a word of what's in there until we actually see it borne out in the federal court of law. And to be clear, this comes as somebody who is competing against Donald Trump to win the nomination because I would make different judgments than he did. But a bad judgment is not breaking the law. And that's not just a threat to Trump. It is a threat to every American. We live in a and I'll close this press conference with the following. We live in a 1776 moment in this country. This is not about 2023 Republicans versus Democrats. That's why I sent this letter to two Democratic candidates, Marianne Williamson and Rob Kennedy Jr. I expect them to respond the same as I expect the Republican candidates to respond because this isn't about Republicans. This isn't about Democrats. This is about who in a constitutional republic actually determines who the leaders of the country are. In our country, it is we the people who make that decision, not a federal police state. That is why we stand on the side of truth. We will not stop till we get answers, and we will be standing up for truth at every step of this campaign. Thank you.